Hey everybody, Vaughn here with the Monster Vlog and welcome to day 213 of A Year of Yoga. Today has been an exceptional day. We got all of our work done in a timely manner uh, for just everything. It was a ton of work and it was a busy day, but it's a good day. I like that complete feeling of did everything. So we're going to record yoga, get some poi spinning in, and then I'm going to go start our third job, which is the homesteading. <laughs> so uh, we're studying how to make our own cheese, which I'm very, very excited about. But it's mostly, <sighs> let's just start practicing our breathing. If you're spinning poi with me today, um, which these are some poi that were very generously gifted to me, probably a year or two ago and I need to get replacement batteries but they actually light up which is a whole bunch of fun and I will try to link them down in the video description because they're they are spin balls off of Amazon and uh they're very cool very affordable and they don't really hurt I mean nothing feels good when it hits you in the face um but <laughs> uh they're not that bad so if you're spinning poi with me today, go ahead and get your poi spinning. If you're not, just doing some arm circles, either large and slow or small and fast in whatever angle or direction makes you happy. Just get a little bit of movement going. Something to, I spent all day in this position and I try to remind myself to have like good posture and stuff but it always ends up like looking at the screen, my eyesight's crap. <laughs> um, and just, so anything that we can do to counterbalance that. <clears throat> what were we talking about? The biggest thing with homesteading for me is not the fun, big, exciting projects. It is the daily grind of staying on top of spinning 20 plates. Cause that's really whenever you own a business or whenever you are, maintaining a household or if you're raising kids or just anything that you're doing it's you've got a plate and you got to keep it spinning um good news is is the plates don't always break when they fall down so you can always put a plate down and get it spinning again later but there's certain plates that we've been trying to keep spinning and that's we hit the litter box every day which that's already been done we try to sweep or vacuum every day um just to keep it for it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be done the effort has to be put in <laughs> Uh, we try to stay on top of, we get dishes shined to sink, and that is something that it's like, we take no excuses on. It doesn't matter if it's two in the morning and we're dead on our feet, we get the dishes washed. Um, and it's just those three things, and then in addition to like maintaining the critters and stuff, helps keep the whole house chugging on smoothly. That way on days whenever we need to really step it up a notch, uh, we can miss a day and the world doesn't end. You know, so though, or we can have an exceptionally busy day and it's, it's all right. Cause you know, everything's kind of clean and tidy and a, at a good waiting, ready at attention, you know, ready to be tackled. So I am just spinning my poi forward on the wall plane with straight arms. We're going to inhale and exhale and really I guess it is I'm gonna go ahead and bend my arms a little bit just to give it a little bit more variation we can extend and then bend but that consistency that small effort a couple drops of water every day into the bucket of effort um, really adds up and then you can just manage your momentum from there and it's not inspiration or motivation that keeps that momentum going <clears throat> though those things do come sometimes you'll hit whoo hit a bump of inspiration and momentum and it kind of springs you forward a little faster but it's the discipline of just applying yourself daily towards your goals <sighs> really starting to feel this in my shoulders now <sighs> so we're going to come down but it's that daily applying yourself towards your goals that I think is the baby steps that get us where we're going. So I just have my fingers through the loops and I'm holding on to the poi themselves. These poi are adjustable so you can shorten or lengthen them. 
<clears throat> and you could use a strap or a belt here as well. And I'm just inhaling up in the center and then exhale, <sighs> leaning to the right, really extending. I'm trying to grow up and out through my arms, even though I don't want to just collapse down to the right. I want to <sighs> grow and radiate out. Inhale back to center, exhale to the left, stretching all through that right side body. And then inhale, I'm turning so that you can see what I'm doing. And exhale, lean back. We come back up on the inhale and come on up. And from here, we will just bow forward. We can let go of the ball ends of the pulley. Bring our hands behind us. <laughs> I'm going to come back up because there we go. And basically just get this transitioned around to where our hands are behind us. Inhale, exhale, bowing forward and raising our hands. Not just trying to lift our hands up, but trying to grow out through our fingers as well. And release. Just letting your head and shoulders hang. And release everything and roll up. Holy one vertebrae at a time. Rolling those shoulders up and back. We are now going to spin on the wall plane from below. And what I mean by that with the wall plane is just if you're standing in a hallway, you want to spin your poi parallel to the walls on either side of you. and we are going to ground through our right foot and lift our left. And lower our left foot. I just breathe, like I, I lose track of the counts. I just like to breathe and balance and just be there. Grounding down through our left foot, lifting our right. If you need to, you can drop that foot down, recenter yourself and pull it back up. Very good. And we can practice our stalls, which is stalling forward, kind of just a directional change. I'm personally, I don't feel like I'm very good at them. I need lots and lots of practice, but fortunately, this is something that is very fun to practice. We're just spinning around, and then when we feel like the weight of the poi is like if we were to let it go, it'd go poof just across the room so we're spinning and then you just like point with your fingers and sometimes it'll swing up too far so but the more you practice the more and you might just try one at a time but right now I'm not super interested in perfecting the technique I just want to get my freaking body moving <laughs> and if spinning balls on a string is fun for you the way it is for me it's a very effective tool for just getting your body moving this is not about perfection it's not about being the best it's about having fun and moving <sighs> 
and I always love we're, we're going to spin on the wall plane to the front but alternate so it looks like this so left right left right left right left right um cardio for the sake of cardio makes me so bored like I love going on walks but not you know I do actually enjoy the walking part but I really love taking walks like outside where I can look at stuff and see things and that's way more fun to me than just trudging along on a treadmill though I will do that given you know no other option <sighs> but uh I really love not just doing marching in place cardio but like stuff that like I feel like I'm boxing or I'm dancing or you know something that regardless of my weight regardless of my age or where I am, I had an experience. I had fun dancing. I had fun going for a walk or I had fun playing punchy game, <laughs> you know, just something like that. And so if I can have an experience or if I can build a skill like spinning poi, that again, regardless of if I ate absolute rubbish today, I'm still having fun practicing this skill that happens to also be active. So that's something that when you're trying to find activities to keep you moving, that really helped me to you know, feel like there was some purpose, some goal, some challenge in what I was doing. And I, I really find myself drawn to the full arts because it gave me a dance partner. You're not dancing alone if you're dancing in your hoop. You're not dancing alone if you're spinning with your poi. And so I'm just practicing here, stepping forward and back. And as I rock through, I'm actually using this as an exercise to pay super close attention to my ankles and my feet. And now I'm going to practice stepping forward. My, I guess that's what we were already doing. So I'll step. Yeah. So as I step forward, I'm really flexing through my back left toes. And as I step back, I'm really pointing my left foot. And now we can step forward and lift our right knee and lower it back. Woo! And step back and lift our left knee. Just shifting our weight, shifting our balance, maybe trying to hold in a few spots. We can now change direction, still spinning on the wall plane, still alternating, just spinning from below. And I have so many different styles of poi because oftentimes one style will start to give me blisters. <laughs> so if the uh, straps on these start to bother me, I'll actually just put them down and grab my, uh, probably my favorite uh, poi actually, which are just youth tennis balls in some old Halloween thigh highs. <clears throat> so these, I think, would be considered sock poi instead of ball poi, I guess. I don't know. I've seen so many different terms used. <sighs> so now with these longer poi, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm holding on <sighs> and just passing my arms through, <sighs> forward and back. And you could do this as well with a yoga strap. And I'm also going to just come on down and do a really nice deep yogic squat. And while we're here, I'm gonna release just a bit more. There we go. Make this nice and wide. Shifting my arms forward and back. And 
then you can press on up. And now I'm going to bring my feet together. <clears throat> and I'm going to come up onto my toes so that my, my balls of my feet are almost together. There's like a thumbprint size between them. And I've got my toes turned out in the direction that my knees will be bending. Coming up on my toes, inhaling and exhale. Down nice and slow. And we're gonna balance right here. If this is very challenging for you, which anybody with knees, <laughs> this is probably pretty challenging. You can use chairs, you can use blocks, you can just avoid this altogether. An alternate move for this would to be come up onto your tippy toes and maybe holding onto a chair. Lift one foot and come down and then lift another foot and come down and it can feel silly like a like a baby bird learning to walk oh just doing that one on each side anything that's very challenging i'm like ooh, this let's do more of this because clearly it's hard so i want to you know do more of it so holding on to my dresser for stability coming off of my mat because the mat is squishy and just makes balancing even more difficult <sighs> coming up onto my toes Inhale and exhale, right leg up. Inhale, bringing our toe down. Exhale, left leg up. Woo, wobble, wobble. <laughs> and just keep alternating with your breath. Breathing fully and slowly. And we can even practice not holding on to anything. I'm not there yet, but we can explore it. One more on each side. Ooh, very good, y'all. Okay, just scooching my mat back into center. <sighs> Inhaling, arms up overhead. <sighs> Exhaling, swan dive down. Rolling up one vertebrae at a time. Let's step our left foot forward. Coming into a high crescent lunge. Inhale, but set that back foot down and whoo, try to not fall over. <sighs> Exhale, warrior two, growing up out of the top of your head and reaching through your fingers, really keeping that hip open, grounding just as much through our back foot as our front foot. Inhale, reach forward, exhale, fingertips to the ground or to a block. Inhale, bring that arm around, come into a high, what is this? What's this called, Ember? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Lizard maybe? I don't know. We're going to lower that back knee down, untuck our toes, pet the kitty. Yeah. <laughs> and coming up into a low crescent lunge. And 
down back forward. We are going to settle on back. Ooh, I'm sorry, Ember. I started falling over. I'm laying it on your goofy ass. I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> and stretch our left hamstring. I know, baby. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I almost squished you. I was falling, though. We can reach around if we want to hold our left foot with our right hand. <laughs> I'm going to walk my hands back forward, planting those back toes, lifting. Inhale, exhale back to plank. Inhale and downward facing dog. Inhale and back to plank. Chaturanga down nice and slow if we can. Inhale and into Cobra. Hey, big girl. Lowering myself back down to the mat. I'm going to try something today to see if we're able. Hmm. Right after I love on the cat, of course. Okay, so I'm inhaling. Exhaling, let's try to, oh my gosh. I could reach it. <laughs> Just holding on to my right foot with my right hand. So we're in a half boat pose. <laughs> yeah, I get gotcha. you. And let's release, trying to not boing our foot. It boings a little. And let's try to do that same thing on the other side. So we're with the strength of our hamstring, bringing our left heel towards our butt. And then reaching back, holding on to the top of the arch of our foot with our left hand. I can't believe I'm doing this right now. Holy smokes. Ember, check this out. What the even heck is this? Is this progress? It feels like it. I'm feeling pretty good. <sighs> Remember to breathe. It is so important. <sighs> and so I'm keeping my other arm, trying to make it be like a railroad. <sighs> because that's going to give us, if we can keep our shoulders squared to the mat, it's going to keep us opening through our shoulders as well. And release. Come on down. We're gonna inhale. Let's bring our hands on either side of our chest. And exhale. Push up and back to downward facing dog. From here, I'm walking my hands back towards my feet. <sighs> Inhale. 
Inhaling up to a flat back. Exhaling down a little deeper. Bending our knees, let's roll up. And roll our shoulders up and back. Now we get to try to remember everything we just did, but on the other side. Good luck. <laughs> I'm a little wobbly, so I'm just gonna stand here a minute. Checking in with my breath, with my heart rate. 126, not bad for just standing here. Let's step forward with our right foot, stepping back with our left into our high crescent lunge. Ooh yeah. Lowering that back foot, coming into our warrior two, keeping that knee centered over our foot. Inhale, reaching forward, exhale, fingertips to the mat or to a block. Bring the left hand down, exhale into, I think this is like a high lizard maybe? I don't know, that's what I want to call it for now, we'll see. I'll Google it later if I ever remember. So far I am not remembered. <laughs> Let's lower that back knee, untuck the toes, and shifting back to get into that reach across hamstring stretch. <laughs> You're such a cutie pie. Let's see you, baby girl. And from here, I'm actually going to shift this foot over, bring my other foot through, and come into a cobbler pose. I snuggle you. While we're here in cobbler pose, let's just focus on our breathing, bringing the outsides of our legs closer to the ground. Mm. Touching some kitty toe beans, wiggle our own beans, say hey beans. We found Ember as an abandoned, maybe less than an, a year old kitten. Her poor little eye was swollen shut. She was so bloated from starvation and worms. Her whiskers were singed back from something. She was a mess. She was on the top step of the stairs to our second story apartment. And we found her there. Uh, she was backed up as far as she could go into the corner of like the step, um, just mewing so pitifully, like she was terrified, but she was like crying for help. It sounded like and we were taken, Randy was leaving for work and I was walking Hazel, Sam and Z's mom, um, who was our baby at the time. And Randy looked at me and he was like, cause we already had a dog and a cat. Um, and he was like, we cannot. I was like, okay. And he was like, you won't. And I was like, I won't. And then he went to work. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe I'll just put some food and water out for her. I mean, I couldn't not. <laughs> and then I was like, well, maybe. Because she came up and she started eating. And she would let me pet her. And I was like, well, maybe. 
maybe I'll just bring her inside for a little while. You know, while Randy's at work. And I was like, well, there'll be no harm in that. And I laid on, we had just gotten a hand-me-down couch, like, for free. And it was awesome. It was so broken that, like, you would lay on it and, like, the cushions would eat you. Those are the best couches. <laughs> like, they're the worst when you're trying to get up. But when you're like, I am the couch, they're the best. And she laid right here. And she was making biscuits. And she buried her little face. This is back when I had a little bit more space between my chin and my chest. She buried her face. And was just purring and just like nuzzled me in my like throat area she was like just oh and i've been wrapped around her stinking little fingers <laughs> she's had me wrapped around her tail uh ever since then and that was back in i think 2008 and randy got home from work and it was always a big deal when randy came home from work because we all missed him all day I was going to college online at the time and starting the business. And the way he tells it is one a dog run by, a cat run by, a second cat runs by. <laughs> but she she uh she wore him down too. And so we had no money, but we took her to the vet and we got her spayed and all her little shots made sure she was healthy and she's the best little kitten I could have ever hoped for she's been a true friend every day of my life yeah you're a menace you're a menace to society <laughs> it's okay I love you even if you are a menace who won't bury your poop she's like well I made it I don't want to bury it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're such a good girl. She hates the world and everyone in it, and I love her for that. <laughs> it's hard work being that full of spite and rage. <laughs> no, I joke, but she is a good girl. It's just, it's so good to appreciate the things in your life that bring you joy as much and as often as possible. So thank you guys so much for joining me here today and for hearing me talk about Abbott and Limber Cat. I'd love to hear how you're doing down in the comments. And I'd love to hear y'all's stories about your fur babies, because they are just absolute joys. And I will see y'all tomorrow for another day of the year of yoga. So until then, you guys, keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>